Hello and welcome to Next 2.0 on WQLN PBS NPR. Next is produced by the Public's Voice Media. I'm your host, Marcus Atkinson. If you get an opportunity, you can go to Facebook and like the page. You can also follow us on Instagram at Next 2.0. There you can hear about the uh, show stories and promos about what's coming up next uh, for our community. Today we got two very special guests. We've got uh, the good Dr. Paris Baker. Bless you, man. Bless Welcome you. Welcome to the show. Mm-hmm. And we've got Pastor Tyrone Clark. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having us. All right. And so this is a special topic today. We want to talk about Larry Meredith. And he is a giant in community who, you know, has several accomplishments to his name and that we want our brothers to unpack today. There's a lot of celebration coming up in his honor soon. And so we wanted to bring attention to him and give him the flowers that he so justly deserves. And hopefully you'll get an opportunity to not just get educated on this brother, but to come out and pay homage to him in various ways as well alongside of the community. And so we'll start with uh, Dr. Baker. Dr. Baker, if you want to talk a little bit about what's going on with these events. Well, well, actually, let's start with who this man was. Well, that might be better to have Pastor Clark talk about who he was and is because he grew up with him and I was introduced to him in my adolescence and and he became a hero. So let's start with Dr. Clark, and I'll pick it up uh, as he moves forward. All right. Brother Clark, talk to us about Mr. Meredith. Again, thank you so much for having us, and we are really blessed to be able to speak on the the life and times of such a robust figure as Larry Meredith. Attorney Meredith, uh, as we came to know him because of his accomplishments Mm -hmm. and the field of endeavor which he pursued in life, is a multifaceted character, and I, as I already said, I knew him, I guess from my earliest uh, remembrance uh, or memories, I can recall Larry Meredith in a relationship with him. In fact, our families have a deep relationship. They are uh, three generational. He, Larry's grandfather and my grandfather were both ministers. Uh, his grandfather, uh, the uh, uh, late pastor Howard Dunbar, uh, is uh, and the church that he uh, helped to develop uh, was sent to develop by the Lord. Uh, it still exists today, and and uh, some of the family members still go there. So uh, my grandfather, also a minister in the city of Erie, those two gentlemen were close. And then uh, Larry's mother, uh, who uh, most people know as a great songster. Mm. Uh, Odessa Meredith, Mm -hmm. uh, what a powerful uh, woman of God she was. And my mother and my father, of course, course was close to her. Uh, They formed a group, uh, a singing group called the Clarkettes, and they toured the the region. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, you know my dad, Bishop Clark, Mm -hmm. he's he's got to make sure that (laughs) (laughs) that he gets his own brand in there. (laughs) But the the real star of that group was uh, Odessa Meredith. Mm -hmm. She had a voice and a talent like none other. Mm -hmm. So it's no strange thing that Larry, I, my family, and his family uh, come to know each other very well in an intimate way. Uh, as I said from the very beginning, I knew Larry uh, as a young man uh, in our community. We mm-hmm. grew up uh, in a place that is uh, familiarized, uh, familiar to many people called Roger Young Park. Roger Young area is, is uh, where they now are doing a lot of development. And, but back then, they were housing projects. And so this great attorney, this uh, robust and austere man grew up in a housing project and there's something about him, I bring that up because there's something about him as he became more uh, 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 dynamic in, in his work, he never left where he mm-hmm. came from. It, it was all part, his roots mm-hmm. were always part of his work. And when you mention his work, he was an attorney. He was an attorney. and Well, I say he was an attorney, but there's so, as I said, there's so many facets to what he did. Mm-hmm. He grew up in the church, and, and a large part of his, his activity remained within the church. And when operating outside the church, the things that he learned, the principles, the doctrine, the, the, the basic character uh, traits that he gained while in the church and from the church, 
he continued to practice throughout his life. Uh, and you saw it manifest in, in how he m not only managed his business of, of law and practicing law, but how he dealt with people every day. Mm -hmm. uh, and so uh, I, I, I grew to know him as a, a, a man of God, a person of God, child of God. Uh, I grew to know him as an attorney par excellence, mm -hmm. uh, uh, and I grew to know him as a, a just community citizen that didn't mind getting in the weeds and, and didn't forget where he came from. That's kind of like an overview of who Larry was. Mm -hmm. It's one of the things that excited me about the prospect of doing this show today because I think that what we don't do enough, and I don't think it's just indicative of Erie, I think we have a tendency of not necessarily letting people know who's around us. Right in that moment. Now, in the African-American community, I think that a lot of people are very aware of the legacy of Mr. Meredith. But at the same time, you know, for all that he's accomplished, you would want people in Greater Erie, because he's a part of Erie history, right? right? In Greater Erie to recognize and understand. And so I'm excited about just the idea of helping people come to a better understanding mm -hmm. of the impact. Dr. Baker, let's go to you. Talk a little bit about um, Brother Meredith and his impact here and what that's meant and what even leads you to come here to have this discussion about his legacy? Well, as a, uh, a developing African-American young man, like most of us, we need heroes. And uh, one of the things I struggled with during the 60s is we had heroes like Malcolm X, like Martin Luther King, but they were far away from us. Right. Larry Meredith became a local hero. Mm -hmm. He was doing something where he was much more tangible. I could touch him like, like he's from the hood. He's, he's, I, I'm like him, he's like me. And so um, in the Upward Bound program at Gannon, when we discovered, uh, we got a brother going to Howard University, you know, and he's gonna be a lawyer like Thurgood Marshall. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and all the icons that we, we read about and thought about, and, but they were way out there. We said, we got someone right here that we can touch. And for me, uh, as an Upward Bound student, hadn't figured out what I wanted to do, who I wanted to be. It made education much more relevant, uh, pursuing social justice and issues related to civil rights much more attainable because I could point to someone and say, he's doing it. And so for me, he became a hero. Larry mm -hmm. uh, was, was, you know, at one time, I thought he went to Georgetown. I keep, if I say Georgetown accidentally, he went to Howard, <laughs> but I keep thinking it's Georgetown. So he's got that in common yeah. with our, our presidential candidate yeah, at this absolutely, time. Yeah, absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely. And, mm -hmm. and he's a capital part of the divine nine the whole bit. But um, there's, a, there's a, a quote from Thurgood Marshall about how he ascended. And the idea, like, I'm Thurgood Marshall, but make no mistake about it, I didn't get here by myself. Mm -hmm. And so I have an obligation to reach back and pull up people right. that are behind me. And to me, that was Larry. Um, very quiet mm -hmm. in, in, in one sense, but very focused and, and very determined about what he wanted to accomplish. And so um, he became a hero. And then when he became the first African-American on city council, mm -hmm. that just raised his esteem for all of us in my cohort mm -hmm. because like he's doing it nationally at Howard University but he came home and now look what he's doing he's changing the landscape of who we are and what we think we could be and so you can see I'm just beaming because uh, he was important to me mm -hmm. uh, not necessarily physically like like we weren't running buddies or anything like that but the the seed was planted yeah yeah and yeah. that developed and so that's kind of that's what's driving me. Well, so this question is for either one of you. When you think about a place like D.C. or mm -hmm. Washington, right. and you think about an environment like Howard University, obviously that is very different than Erie right. in many, many ways. And so he comes back, he becomes the first African-American city councilman. Uh, to the best of your ability, can you say how you think that experience at Howard kind of shaped his worldview? How did it change him? And what do you think he brought back with him mm -hmm. to Erie from that experience? I can tell you from the from the days of P Funk, he brought back <laughs> Chocolate City. <laughs> okay, now I'm being very so real because in Erie, which at, at one point you know our population is, I think at that particular time might have been 20, ten or twelve percent. Um, you go you go to D.C. and it's seventy percent African American. Yeah. So there's a def, different orientation to what you see, how you see it, and what you think you can do, what you know you can do. Mm -hmm. So to bring that back and to say, although this is a conservative, white, middle-class town, 
there is a place, an access point, whether right. it's legal or economic, you can make a difference. And so to have that come back and have that attitude shift, mm -hmm. amazing. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because it's, it's a part of the public discourse now, and then I'll go to Pastor Clark, it's a part of the public discourse now, but just the impact of HBCUs on not just the African-American community, but the greater community is now starting to be appreciated more. Right. But make no mistake about it for the listener, if you've never experienced that culture, it is a different culture Absolutely. than what you see here. Absolutely. And if you are, if you interact with it, let alone being immersed in it, you are forever changed. Mm -hmm. And so this is where the question comes from, Pastor Clark. You're, you're so very right about that. The cultural differences is, uh, is just uh, a great, of great magnitude. And what's important for us, I think, is, uh, in this conversation is when uh, Attorney Meredith, with Larry Meredith at the time, went off to school, Howard University, and he he gained this sense of uh, of ethnically who he was mm -hmm. ethnically, uh, and um, and down there you get a, a new sense of blackness because of all the things you right. talked about. Mm -hmm. uh, he, at the time he left, the population of City of Erie was around 135 to 140 thousand people. All right. When he came back, uh, we started to see outward migration of people from the city of Erie to the county and from the county to outside of the region. Mm -hmm. And so he came back to a city that was uh, a GE, which was our major employer, a decrease in, in, in uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, amount of employees, sure. Hammer Mill, con contemplating whether they were going to stay here, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. And Cyrus Erie and Zern right. and Lord and all those all decreased. He came back to that. What that does, and it's a conversation we should have about how we look at things today, in terms of our race and ethnicity, what that does is says, how does a man, a black man with all his prowess and with all his uh, uh, dynamic education, how does he work with a city that are, uh, are dealing with a populace that's trying to fight to keep what they have? Mm -hmm. Because they see that outward migration of talent and, and, and education and everything else, that's right? Excellent point. Now, now he has to come back to that. Now he has to deal with it different from when he, where, where he dealt with it when he, le when he, when he left here. Right when he left here, you had uh, uh, your mom uh, and, and and my dad and mm -hmm. your dad were fighting to get us into positions. We were happy to get in positions of manufacturing. Everything. He comes back to a place with this type of education. It's a different dynamic altogether. Absolutely, that shaped the way Larry approached his work. Yeah, mm -hmm. it shaped it. He could have come back and said, "Look, I've got this new sense of blackness and." I, I could be the Cap, uh, the Colin Kaepernick of the day and say I, I'm going to take a knee and you're not going to you're not going to not going to do anything other than <laughs> what I want to do. He yeah. could have done that, but he was a man that said, "Look, I got to be wise in every step I make." Mm -hmm. And and so he called us with people uh, that would help him uh, kind of like get to a place where he wanted to enact some of the things that he wanted to do. And that's mm -hmm. what I admire. That that is heroic in and of itself. Well, well the fact that there was. You know, in the in the the perspective of uh, Larry and folks like um, Fred Thompson and Gary Moyer, mm -hmm. there was this exodus. Like, if you're gonna make it, you young and black, you have to go somewhere else. You got to go to Atlanta. You got to go Chicago. You can't do it here. So to have a brother who's got education and come back and plant himself here, yeah. And the in the the mantra or the mantra or the monaco or whatever it was. Earn, learn, return. There you go. Yeah, you can go, but come back because you have a response. You have a responsibility there you go. to the folks you left again. Going mm -hmm. back to Thurgood Marshall, that really made sense. And for me, though, it's not a, a direct um, uh, reason why I stayed. It definitely influenced. You know, Larry, he could have had a practice anywhere. You know, once you get connected in D.C. at Howard, you got connections. I mean, you go anywhere. Yeah, yeah. So to so come back was like. And so when I got my PhD, like black man in America with a PhD, I can go anywhere. I got a blank check. Mm -hmm. This idea of no, you need to come back and return. Now my family was was a major major motivation for me coming back and staying. But it's that idea that once you've learned something, you have an obligation to give that back to plant that in the people. Because you, you and I both know, all of us know that. Mm -hmm. You know, blank, br bleh, brain drain. Our best and brightest. African American youth mm -hmm. are flying out of here. They sure are. Yeah, they sure are. Because they don't see opportunity. And when I was growing up, again, this is another like ugh, you don't. And there's nothing wrong with going to GE. There's nothing wrong with working in the industry. But that's all I knew. Like I yeah. was my my 
my path, career path was GE, right? My dad did it. I'm coming right behind him. That's Baker's boy. Mm -hmm. Never thought like, wow, you could go to college and do something else. Do something else. Yeah. Like, oh, okay, that's possible. And again, I go back to that's kind of what he brought back from my cohort. Like, we were really impacted by mm -hmm. it. just the notion that we could go to college and be something. When I'm talking to young people, I'm always trying to impress upon them the fact that being a game changer is a heavy burden to bear. Absolutely. And it's so easy to scroll on your phone and do the TikTok dance, and I'm not mad at any of that, and not necessarily think of because – you know, a lot of them feel that you don't have to and not think about all of the, the prices that were paid before you were able to do all of those things. And so as you're talking about Attorney Meredith, I'm thinking to myself, OK, and so he comes back from D.C. You're describing the environment he comes back to. Mm -hmm. He is now credentialed. He's been immersed in this culture. Mm -hmm. And now how do I use that to impact change? And there is a strategic mind that has to be at work in order to navigate that because you are not only picking the lock of this very heavy door of opportunity, you now got to find some way to prop it open mm -hmm. so that other folk can come behind you. Yes. Talk about that because the weight of that I think we take for granted yeah. because of what life is today. Talk about the weight of that and just how he navigated all of that. Well, you know, real quickly, let's talk about the, the, the presumptive Democratic uh, presidential candidate whose mother instilled in her, you will be the first in a lot of things, but make sure you're not the last. That's the point. Yeah, that is the point. And so Mayor, uh, Larry being the first made sure that that crack, and, and I got to talk about what it's like to be first, because uh, I was the first African-American tenure professor at Ganyan. Mm -hmm. And so when you're first, it's hitting you first. Yeah. And people who are, who are locked in, have a resistance to that kind of change because change means it's going to affect me. Mm -hmm. And so you see that now in the national landscape with discussion about, oh, she's just a DEI hire. I can't even imagine <laughs> yes. what Larry endured in 1976. Yeah. I'm Dude. laughing out of frustration, not yeah. because it's funny. I mean, no. it's so outrageous. It, it's that, outrageous. But I digress. Go ahead. Yeah. Well, that's the point. I just, <laughs> yeah, it's like, what, what do we have to do to, to legitimize what we've already done? Amen. Yeah. Amen. So, well, isn't it just ironic that we're still uh, talking about that same struggle, those same barriers today, today. that he was, was dealing with uh, 30 years ago? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I just think that's, use your word, outrageous. <laughs> yeah. And, and Mo Troop, if I'm not mistaken, Mo Troop is his nephew, correct? Yes, that mm -hmm. is correct. And their Mo Troop is on city council. Yes. City council. Right. And so yes, that right. door that his uncle did yeah, the lock right. of, right. it mm -hmm. was propped open and there he sits. Right. You know, that alone is a huge testimony. Absolutely. Yeah. That, that's amazing. Uh, Larry had, and I, I want to make uh, this point, Larry had some people, he, he was, a, he was a, uh, a novice at certain things and he broke some uh, barriers down, but he had some examples. He had some people that he didn't necessarily think were uh, heroes to him, but certainly he had some people to look up to. Mm -hmm. I think this conversation has to make note of that fact. James Wade, uh, mm -hmm. who uh, was, was one of the people that he, he worked with, looked up to. Ben Wiley, of course, and who didn't, right? Mm -hmm. uh, Howard and Millie Horton and Paul Mar Reverend Paul Martin. Mm -hmm. uh, all, these people kind of shaped his social strata. And, and, and how he would go about doing practicing the law. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Reverend Denny, mm -hmm. remember him? Ernest Denny, I worked for him at the Booker T. Washington right? Center. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. So you, you know how what he expected of the people that came along with him. Mm -hmm. Larry was one of them. Bobby Harrison, of course, from JFK. Yeah, JFK. Mm -hmm. And, of course, my, my dad, Bishop Clark, and others mm -hmm. all helped uh, mold Larry. And so that even with his education, even with his community ties, even with his national ties, mm -hmm. and the ability to make big money because he was very, very intelligent, mm -hmm. uh, he came back and he, and he uh, aligned himself with people who were not money uh, interested and, and, and they were more community interested and, yeah. and, and that kind of shaped him. Uh, because of that, I think um, he got to a place where he was very comfortable in doing that. And, I'm, and I guess there's an argument as to whether or not he did it so much, was it to his benefit or not to his benefit? Because uh, uh, there pro could be an argument that he gave away much more than he gained, mm -hmm. particularly financially. Mm -hmm. yeah. Which is usually something you can say about a lot of great leaders in, yeah, in, in a lot of respects. You know, at some point, there's a level of comfort 
that is more than enough to be content with, mm -hmm. right? And so you lead a life of substance, oftentimes something has to be sacrificed. There's a balance there. Fred Rush always talks to me yeah. about that. Find that balance. <laughs> yeah. Pay your bills, yeah. Yeah. but give back to the community, mm -hmm. you know, and, and everybody has to find that balance. That's right. You know, and so we are in a season where you are in the process of celebrating his accomplishments. Can we talk about just what led to that? Maybe there were conversations that bubbled to the surface. How long after he left us did these conversations start to happen? And then we can move into the actual events that will be honoring this man. Yeah. Before we go, I just want to make one more comment. When we mentioned Mo, right? Mo True or Maurice, respectfully. Mm -hmm. There is a connection again. Councilman that, Maurice. Ma Maurice, <laughs> yes. Maurice Troop and the school that yeah. was, he works at uh, uh, Erie High. Erie High. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Larry is connected to James Meredith. That's correct. Yes, and that's important. The James first African-American to go to the University of Mississippi. Their cousins. Oh. Yeah, their cousins. Their cousins. Got yeah. you. So there was a legacy that needs to be uh, uh, shared. Right. Uh, and again, the influence that, that uh, I, I believe fueled his approach to life, education, and so on and so forth. Now, what happened was, unfortunately, um, Larry just passed too soon, like a lot of folks. Like, he, one day he was here, and the next day he wasn't. And, mm. and so, you know, part of it was I, I didn't know his sister uh, at all at one point, uh, Nita. And then I started, I was on a, a thread. Mm -hmm. And it, it just, so, as soon as I read, we need to make sure that people, like his name is not lost. And so there's some things that we need to do. Because over time, if we, if you don't memorialize someone, if you don't create the, the legacy thread, you know, 10 years from now, we might forget who Larry Meredith mm -hmm. is. And so I said, I'm on board, jump on board with that. So that was my motivation. Um, because there's just, again, we, there's so many things we have not talked about that we kind of leapfrogged over that will be talked about in this event um, for different, different purposes. And one of the things that I didn't, I didn't know initially, but again, there's like at this table, you know, there are three pastors at this table, mm -hmm. right? The influence of the church, enormous, three educated brothers, even like all that integration mm -hmm. and how you don't have to be one at the exclusion of the other. And that's yeah. kind of how I grew up. If you were in church, you couldn't do this. Or if you were doing this, you can't be the church boy or whatever, you know. And so it, for me, it's really important as we, uh, you know, plan and get ready to uh, have these different events that people get an opportunity to know the multifaceted Larry Meredith. Mm -hmm. Because he's, you can't capture him and he's the firstest or he's, you know, an attorney that or whatever. There's just lots of layers to who this man is. And we need to make sure that people not only know that, but don't forget that. Mm -hmm. yeah. is, there, is there conversation ensuing with City Hall to mm -hmm. honor the fact that he was that first in some way, shape, or yeah. fashion? Can I speak to yeah, that? Yeah, I was going to say. Uh, I had to... Oh, there's, mm -hmm. there's part of this whole conversation that is tough for me mm -hmm. because I've known him literally all my life. Mm -hmm. Pastor, his sisters, and uh, as well, even today. And, and so, uh, anecdotally, my brother took a, one of Larry's sisters to the prom. <laughs> 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 now, that, that probably were fixed by the parents. <laughs> yeah. that's, that's eerie for you. Right? Yeah. Yeah, that's, <laughs> but but it's, this is tough for me, but I had the ex Dream or the, the, the great honor to uh, eulogize uh, Attorney Meredith. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the things I was happy to hear that on that day, the uh, mayor of the city of Erie, uh, Mayor Joe Schimber, uh, got up and said that we, he is dedicated to having a Larry Meredith day. Dr. Baker, his sister Anita, his sister Carol, Evangelist Troop, they took him up on it. <laughs> and they made it a, a mission to make sure that we're going to make that happen and keep that word. Yeah. And, and so I think that was part of that impetus there. Mm -hmm. I mean, that is a worthy thing. Yes. I'm glad that you seized on it because sometimes people say things in a moment. You're like, you know something? That's a good idea. We're going to write with that yeah. and make sure that, that that's honored. But that's something that... Um, we need to make sure that people understand what was done in the past and how that impacts our future. I've often said that about, you know, I've heard somebody say that about art in Erie. 
and it seems like an aside, but I think this matters to some degree in this conversation. When you look around Erie, I was in a meeting one time with Mayor Schimber. We talked about the priorities of Erie. And I said, if I wasn't from Erie, I would think that war was a priority because the only thing memorialized publicly yeah. is war. Mm. We know who Oliver Hazard Perry is. We, you know, all these other things. Every time you turn around, and I'm not mad at those images, but, you know, what about the Larry Merediths? What about the Sister Joan Chittisters, people that have kind of lent to the soul of Erie? How are we memorializing those people? And I think it is a good rhythm to get into as a community. It says that this impact matters, mm-hmm. right? Can, can I ask you a question? Sure. Uh, 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 with this wonderful podcast, you have a voice for the community and to the community. Uh, do, do you think there is more of a need for us to highlight and, and, and bring to the forefront some of these uh, these great members that come up in our community, like Attorney Meredith, uh, like your mom and, and others, uh, that, that really have done something that's momental? Yeah. Uh, and and, 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 and should we be doing more of that? I think absolutely. And one of the things, one of the conversations that I'm constantly a part of is this idea of uh, museum and memorializing, right? Mm-hmm. So Bishop Jones has his African American Museum, yes. and I love that. I know that Bishop Bishop um, Brock is trying to do the same thing, and at the mm-hmm. MLK Center, we're in the process of doing the same thing with a lot across the street, mm-hmm. just like at the, the Thomas B. Hagen, mm-hmm. you know, Center for Museum. And other places, I think you have to create a space where that's said. Mm -hmm. And for certain individuals and certain images, like you talked about the Hortons, they were an influence Mm -hmm. on Brother Meredith. Well, their sons and daughters are still having a huge impact on the community, you know, today. And and you could look at Andre and to be the first in his position. That's right. Right? Mm -hmm. On county council. Those things are significant. Mm -hmm. And they should not only be mentioned, our children should have just as much opportunity to go and say, hey, I didn't know X, Y, and Z. And it should be woven into the fabric of our educational community. And Mm -hmm. so, Mm -hmm. say all that to say, absolutely. And it's not done enough. Mm -hmm. I don't think, I want to say I was probably in my 40s when I really, and I'm 54 now, when I really started to appreciate the amount of living legends that I was among. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And... All of our youth should have an opportunity to see and say, hey, I didn't know this person was. This person represents this to my my journey. This person represents that to my journey. Mm-hmm. Because as we say in the 100, what they see is what they'll be. Mm-hmm. And some people don't envision themselves as a Larry Meredith mm-hmm. figure because mm-hmm. they don't know that there was a Larry Meredith mm-hmm. figure. Exactly. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right? So the nine-year-old should know, I want to be like Mr. Meredith. Well, if they don't even know him. That's right. So this should be, this should be a centralized location of some sort yes. that I think people can go and intentionally see. And we're hoping to aggregate these efforts Mm -hmm. so that that can be created. They're certainly giving out money for all kinds of things. They can find money for that. And and, and it (laughs) takes on even a greater relevance and importance when they are, there are other uh, institutions, uh, people trying to uh, erase or or diminish the accomplishments of our our people or, or erase it by taking books out of the schools and libraries Absolutely. and everything and so i guess what i hear you saying is that we have to be responsible for making those things uh, uh bring them to the forefront absolutely and not rely on someone else to do it for us absolutely yeah. and even creating more space like this today mm-hmm. to say this is who this person is or this is who this person was I see. so i think it's a relevant point right so this conversation starts to happen and i know he had some social organizations that he was tied to the elks mm-hmm. if i'm not mistaken he was a, was a very large player in the Elks because I think the last person I spoke to was a member of the Elks Club. The Elks, yep. uh, Masons, uh, he's a Kappa, mm-hmm. uh, uh, the fraternity. Uh, he was a member of the Erie County Bar Association. Uh, so, And he's done some things at Edinburgh. I don't remember all the things he did when he, he worked at Edinburgh for a while. But, mm-hmm. but um, yeah, he, he was on the board of directors at the JFK. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Again, there's a lot of layers to Larry and his uh, commitment to uh, community service. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So this honoring, you know, Mr. Meredith, is this a consortium of different individuals or different groups? And talk about all the people that are involved with oh this. Oh, my God. A lot. Mm-hmm. <laughs> there's a lot of people. If, if, so that uh, we don't run out, of, <clears throat> run out of time, I'm going to talk. I'll get into those individuals because there's a, there's a laundry list of, of folks. Um, and they all make sense when we talk about them. But <clears throat> the thing that's going to happen on August 5th, it's um, Larry Meredith 
that's Mary, Larry Meredith Day. There'll be a proclamation. That'll happen at 2 o'clock uh, in uh, Perry Square. All right. Yeah. And, um, and then there's going to be some tributes, and the mayor's going to do a couple things. Um, and then from that, um, there's going to be a kind of a commemorative march from the Erie County Courthouse to Perry Square. Perry Square. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And again, just, you know, kind of the idea is like the March for Justice. <clears throat> Excuse me, those kind of things. There'll be pr- uh, prayer and some opening remarks by Pastor Clark. Uh, and then later, uh, and by the way, that's going to be called the Poor Man's March. Poor March, Man's March. March. Yes. Gotcha. Um, and then later that evening, oh, wait a minute, I forgot. <sighs> Can't yeah, then at the park, we have to. There's going to be an unveiling of the Larry Meredith bust. I was yeah, go ahead, go yeah, ahead. and that's real important because that's how we're going to make sure that folks in city government, city council, when you walk in, you will get a chance to yeah, to to see and read about who this man was. And that's so he where he belongs. belongs. Yes, absolutely. So there will be a bust unveiling of that bust. You were going to say something, sir? No, no. Okay. And then later on, there will be <clears throat> actually be a program uh, at the JFK at 6 o'clock. Who was commissioned to do the bus, just as an aside? Oh, I, I, that I don't know. Okay. Uh, just curious. Yeah. Just curious. Yeah. Okay, that's a lot of robust activity. Uh, yes. I'm excited about the bus to City Hall. I was just about to say that's where it belongs. You Absolutely. should every time you come into chambers. And there's a second one that will be unveiled at the JFK. Very Again, nice. Because of his commitment to youth and to that to that institution, JFK, there's going to be one um, there also. Okay. Yeah. Okay. What role did he play within some of the social organizations that you named? He was a Mason. He was an Elk. You know, his Kappa. What role did he play, especially in some of the local ones? Well, I'm going to I'm going to highlight the one I think we already talked about a little bit. The one that had I think the most impact, where he got the least compensation, and that is Larry helped so many people with legal issues. I heard that so many people at no charge or, you know, 25 percent of my legal fee or what have you. And and he just did that over and over and over again. Mm-hmm. And so when we say how much did he sacrifice, I don't think you could you can calculate yeah. how much legal um, information, advice, representation that he gave away. Mm-hmm. Yeah, amazing. May I personalize? Yeah. Absolutely. A little Absolutely. bit, if you don't mind, Dr. Baker. Mm-hmm. Pastor, if you don't mind. Absolutely. Bring it, make it a little bit more personal. You talk about what role did he play in both the community and some of the organizations. He always started out as a follower, but he found himself elevated to a, a leader. Mm-hmm. So I, I like to think of him as a servant leader. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he wouldn't mind leading from behind. Yes. Uh, mm-hmm. And that, I, I kind of like characterize him. But I'll tell you something. Uh, Attorney Meredith uh, had, he passed away just, you know, uh, as Dr. Baker said, kind of unexpectedly, mm-hmm. too soon. But he had resigned himself to not practicing on a regular basis law. Mm-hmm. He had resigned himself not getting involved in politics, which he was very much involved in politics on the state and local level. And he resigned himself not to, to be being uh, very much uh, pushing the, the goals and initiatives of the organizations, the many organizations he had been involved with. He resigned to kind of letting that go. What a lot of people didn't know is that Larry uh, felt that he had fought the good fight, had finished, pretty much finished his course, mm-hmm. and he had kept the faith, obviously. Two, three weeks, maybe four weeks before he passed away, he was being compelled, not compelled, he was being uh, requested to come to this weekly community gathering of, of, of business leaders and other social leaders. And yeah. He didn't want to do it, but he did it. He didn't want to come spend his more Saturday mornings, but he did it. Mm-hmm. And he pulled me aside after one of those meetings and he says, I'm tired. He said, I'm not feeling good. And he, he said, I pulled you aside. I want to talk to you because I know you've been coughing a lot. And, and he says to me, I've been doing the same thing. I hold my breath in these meetings, but I'm really like, I got, got a cough and everything. And so I you know, gave him my quack medical advice <laughs> <laughs> what he should do. Right, right, right. And I asked him, why then are you here? Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah. Why are you here? Yes. His yeah. answer was, 
It's in my blood. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's in my blood. Mm -hmm. yeah. The next week, he goes up to the VA hospital. He was a vet. I don't know if we said that. No, 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 no. We didn't catch that part. Yeah, he was a vet. He goes up to the hospital. He gets a diagnosis. It wasn't necessarily the most essential diagnosis he could get. Yeah. Two or three days later, he found himself back at the hospital this time, not at the VA. Yeah. The rest is history. Mm -hmm. But it was who he is. Yeah. yeah. He yeah. was, and, mm -hmm. and, and I don't think he, even though the body was weak, uh, flesh was weak, uh, yeah. there was a spirit about him, what he did that, he, you know, it, was, it just drove him. Yeah. And he never, never got paid for those things. Mm -hmm. Never. Yeah. I can tell you that. Yeah. And I don't think it's hyperbole to say it. When you mention that, I think of um, Dr. King, who was on his way somewhere else. And you had the sanitation workers strike. And he said, we got to divert. We got to go. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> in that speech on April 3rd, um, he talked about the Samaritan and the focus on what happens if I stop. Mm -hmm. And he reversed that and said, what would happen to them if I don't come? Right. Yeah. And that's Larry. While I'm personally struggling, what happens if I'm not present? What happens if I'm not there? And so I have to be there to ensure, even if I'm not physically 100%, I still have intellect, I still can hear, and I can make suggestions or whatever. I have to be there. Yeah. And I think, again, I don't think that's hyperbole to, to kind of put them next to each other. This is one of the reasons that I, I have such a profound appreciation for people that are servant leaders in community. Mm -hmm. I think it takes a level of commitment that is taken for granted by the average person. The idea of that was in his blood, he was compelled to do so. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, watching people that are in that space because, you know, I feel myself as a junior member or a member of that fraternity, right? Yeah. And when I try to explain it to people, I'm like, yeah, there's, there's no such thing as not doing the thing you feel called to do. Right. There's no, dude, slow down. It's, mm -hmm. it's what I wish I could yeah. sometimes, yeah. you know, but, and so it's interesting and the world needs people like that. And how many people receive the calling of some sort mm -hmm. and they go the other way. They, they try to join a thing. I'm going to just, you know, I'm going I'm to dive in the ocean. And swim. No, 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 no. Sometimes the whale spits them up, sometimes not, but people try to run from <laughs> but it, you, there's a level of gratitude mm -hmm. for people who take that step. Yes. You know, so I'm glad that City Hall especially is recognizing it. So this would be right in the foyer right there. Mm -hmm. with yes. Good deal. You won't miss it. And and uh, again, I, I got a small list because, you know, I think we mentioned them, the 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 Elks and the ladies of Ozell Temple and the Kappas and City Council, County Council. The school board, um, Patrick Harkins as a representative, the NAACP, the list goes on and on and on. There's mm -hmm. lots of folks surrounding. And again, that just speaks to, again, the different layers, how, how many different uh, institutions or structures did he touch? And so there's, there's a lot of places um, that wanted to be part of this, and it's going to be an amazing ceremony, at least for me. It'll, I can't wait mm -hmm. yeah, to just participate in that. Uh, Any members of city council playing an active role in this that would seem appropriate? Uh, I, 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 Andre is on the county council. Yeah, on the county council. And I, he'll be speaking. He'll have a, a proclamation of some sort. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. And of course, uh, his nephew, Maurice. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. yeah so it's well, and then again, we have some former city council persons involved in uh, Mel Witherspoon, of course. Yes, oh, a major force. Yeah, they were very Spoon. close. Yes, they were. Yeah. <laughs> and affectionately, by the way, that's not disrespectful. So he's Spoon. <laughs> <laughs> that's what we know him as. That's how we know yeah, him. Yeah, and, yeah. And, and, and if Mel, if you're, if you're listening, <laughs> I got the hands moving because he knows what that means. We're raising the roof. <laughs> I got you. I got you. I, I love the fact that you mentioned all these organizations that he's involved in the Elks, you know, and some of these other groups because we're at a season right now, speaking of the fact that he's got that educational background in common with our presidential candidate right now, Kamala Harris. Mm -hmm. It's been highlighted and spotlighted on the news, um, various different news channels, about the impact of these this divine nine relationship that she had and these social organizations. And so if you can just for a brief moment, help the listener understand just how profound 
it is woven into the fabric of our cultural experience in this country. When you think about the show, the social clubs, whether it's the Elks mm -hmm. or whether it's being an alpha or a cap or what have you, because Dr. King was an alpha. Right. His wife was an AKA, uh -huh. right? Uh -huh. And so these things go back a long way. It's interesting, you know, very quickly, that the AKAs, you know, were birthed in 1908, mm -hmm. and they were talking about on the news. I had to laugh and chuckle. They said that there were so many donors, a thousand plus donors, that were donating, you know, nineteen nineteen dollars and eight cents, yeah, yeah. and then that same donor would turn around and then give a hundred, five hundred thousand dollars. Why are they Why are they giving nineteen dollars and eight cents first? And yeah. it was their little code for yeah. I'm giving to my sister. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah. But talk about the impact of these organizations and, and that impacted Brother Meredith's life so much. Yeah, well, as you mentioned that, um, you know, the, the first clarion call, there was like 43,000 women who came out. And then the brothers, not to be outdone, it was like 53 or 55,000 that came out. And there was something qualitatively different. Now, I love my education from Gannon, from Case, and from Pitt. It's different. But I wish I had went to an yeah, HBCU. And the reason I say that is just real quickly, I was part of the product of the 70s. Again, going back to when Larry went away to uh, Howard, there was an influx of teachers. Um, Frank Williams, Johnny Johnson, Johnny Harrison, the whole bit. There was a bunch. And they all brought this HBCU orientation to education. You were going to be smart, <laughs> right? You sit in class, you're going to learn. You're going to learn something or whack, you know. And, and again, that was foreign to us. Like you sit in class and I sit in the back and slouch and a whole bit. You, that's not how you come to class. Yeah. yeah, you have to be prepared and ready. And it was not only to be ready, the historical context of why it's important to be ready, okay? And I think we all benefit, uh, benefit from that. What I am sad about, and I mean this sincerely, is how our nation separates that mm. like our vice president who i think th th there's they make jest of her calling her by her first name and inappropriately calling her kamala and the whole bit mm. like trying to demean this woman has paid her dues mm -hmm. and 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 again that hbcu is uh, uh, influx yeah. of just values and commitment and all that you can't you can't get rid of that and again that's part of what larry brought back mm -hmm. to, to erie i'm i'm convinced of that mm -hmm. and i'm talking so much i actually forgot your original question <laughs> no, you, I, I was searching like it's, i'm just asking i'm embarrassed like what, what am i trying to answer <laughs> no 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 you 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 answered it you i just answered. go off i'm sorry <laughs> well, well let me just speak to some of that and what your initial question was here, let me let us put it in this perspective. Let me give you some names that that are also enrolled and going to be participating in this activity. Uh, uh, Dr. Stacy Hitt, yes, who is a cap. Uh, uh, Andre Horton, we mentioned, uh, uh, city councilman, first black city council person on Erie County Council. Uh, uh, Angela Ewell McNair. Uh, Larry's niece mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and Ed Dawson a, a businessman developer around town uh, with the Elks uh, mm -hmm. Ollie Porter all, all these people are, are, are successful in their in, in individual ventures sure. mm -hmm. and, and, and it's because of the roots that Larry established in yeah. our community and they, and they have as you've been talking about they have him to look at up to and so when we talk about how to make this day what it should be, something that is momentous and something that we can set a standard that others can follow and, and something that we can actually really have a celebration that is, mm -hmm. that, that is uh, worthy of, of every effort we're making. It, it, we're not doing it because we have that relationship with them. We're right. doing it because there are so many people that are, are in all these disparate parts of walks of life mm -hmm. that want to make it happen. And, 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 and therefore, I think it's going to be a success. Take the African-American community. I'm sorry, Dr. Big. Go ahead. Yeah, just real quickly, this is, this is a Dr. Stacy Hitt story that I think it, it makes the point it needs to be told. Now, there is a, an icon. I don't, you might know him, Alan Poole. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, every, one of my yeah, mentors from back in the day. Right? Yeah, King I say, he's just a mentor of everybody. Yeah, King Center. So Stacy, when he was a ball player at Vincent, mm -hmm. got an a invitation to AAU in Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. And he didn't have any money, right? And so Alan got paid on a Friday, went to the bank. This is a true story. Uh, went to the bank, 
got paid, put the money in his hand and said, make it happen. There you go. And put the entire check in his hand and said, go make it happen. And now he's Dr. Stacy Hitt. That's the environment that we're talking about where there are people pouring in and it wasn't just lip service. It's like, I want you to make it. And so here's some money to do that. Okay. Now, so you, you, you're forcing me to, to add this to it. Of course, Alan Poole went to East High School. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> as well as, as, as Larry. Mm -hmm. and, and, and yeah, so there's a relativity there. I, again, I just think it was an infectious understanding that one makes it, we all make it. Right. Yeah. A absolutely. Mm -hmm. So for the listener, obviously there's, there is a profound impact on the African-American community mm -hmm. by the presence of and the life and times of Larry Meredith. Make the case for why this is important to Greater Erie, which is why I'm so mm -hmm. excited that Greater Erie is honoring or that the mayor is spearheading this or coming alongside of this. Why is this important? Because we say, you know, black history is American history. Mm -hmm. Make a case for why this is important to Erie. Okay, now I got that question. You wanna go first? Cause I'm gonna, go right here. I'm gonna be crazy. <laughs> why is this important? And now part of our, I've already said, um, to have someone that focused come from Erie is a reason why. And, and I'm very quickly, not only Larry Meredith, you think about like Ada Lawrence, mm -hmm. Harry T. Burley, mm -hmm. like, like these incredible folks, Charles, I mean, uh, yeah, Charles Kennedy and Bruce Morton Wright and a whole oh, bit. Yeah, There's, yeah. I can keep going on and on and on. Like, oh, yeah. like in the Bible says, can any good thing come out of Nazareth? Can any good thing come out of here? Hey, man. I grew up here. Preach that, that sir. Yeah. Yeah. Preach I'm that, like, sir. No, no. <laughs> There's a wealth of folks that have emerged out of Erie, Pennsylvania. And so for that point alone, we should, we should uh, make the case. But then our future, where are we going? You know, we have a, a, a mayor, he'll probably be a three-time mayor, is my guess, who's made a commitment to diversity. And so we should take advantage of that. We have all this intellectual capital here right now. Mm -hmm. and, and let's wake up the, the, the possibility or in the, in the guise of um, uh, President, uh, President Obama, like we believe we can. We can, and again, as we said, the hundred, the black hundred, the, was, you know, hundred black men, hundred black men. Amen. If you can see it, you can achieve it. That's you right. Believe it, and so just getting people to understand, getting our young people to understand, it is possible. Mm -hmm. And and here are some examples, and they're not that far away from us. Yeah. Yeah. Now that's case two. I'm going to stop unless you, because I'll just keep going, because I want to allow me to do one more. You said you're 54. I, I did. I yes, am. you did. And I know that you were born here, raised here, and then you left. Mm -hmm. And then you came back. Yes, sir. And look what you're doing. Yes, sir. That's what I'm saying. Like, we, again, I can just point to you and say, here's the case. Mm -hmm. You're the case. Yeah. But then I can look over here and say, and you're the case, uh, Brother Tyrone. There's just the capital around here is the human capital is so, we're so rich. And so, no, just wake up and look around. And not just African, uh, the African American community. Look around our community; every every part of who we are is valuable. Every part of it. So don't miss it because you you're you're blinded by race or gender or sexual orientation or any of that stuff. So, which is why I like our our, our president, our Democratic <laughs> president <laughs> nominee. I don't want to go off. But, yeah, because it's inclusive. Like I'm, I'm trying to get everybody in the circle. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, Pastor Clark, you pointed out the fact that he went east. Yes, he did. Right? And so I think that's significant because I know with the work that I've done with the district over the years, it's been one of the things that I think we definitely should get stronger at because I look at a culture like a cathedral prep, for example, mm -hmm. which my daughter just graduated from. It's not mm -hmm. a disparaging thing, and my son's going to end up there too. Mm -hmm. But, you know, the way they promote this person is prep mm -hmm. within, mm -hmm. you know, and they try to give young prep people a sense of pride to be a rambler. They mm -hmm. openly promote, and that is not a negative thing. No. When you look around the school district and you think about the titans of industry mm -hmm. here in Erie, and I think about, you know, Wally Knox from the powerful Knox mm -hmm. Law Firm, SV alum, mm -hmm. just yeah. like I am, mm -hmm. right. you know, Thomas Hagen, Thomas B. Hagen and all of his power, 
SV alum, just mm -hmm. like me, Nick mm -hmm. Scott, SV mm -hmm. alum, just mm -hmm. like me, all of these different people. Right. And so whether it's an African-American community in the, you know, the greater Erie community, to point out the fact that these people were produced by us, because to your point, Dr. Baker, can anything good come from Nazareth? Mm -hmm. I'm sick of people saying that about the Erie School District. Exactly. We aren't producing. What? We have produced heavyweights in this right. place. Absolutely. And why are we not telling these kids, black, That's white, right. or other, mm -hmm. that all of these titans of industry and community, start naming them. That's right. Put them on the walls in the hallway, whatever you want to do. Let kids, this is what you come from. Mm -hmm. So don't be misled that you got to go to one of these private schools to follow in the footsteps That's of right. giants. Absolutely. Nothing could be further from the truth. All right. So we talked about the Monday events, the Friday events. We punch home the Friday events. What were the Friday events? That's um, at the Sheridan. That's the Kappa event. That's the Kappa event. Okay. So that's that is their fraternity. Mm -hmm. They're doing something there. And it's very specific. It's not exclusive to just Kappa. Anyone can come. You, you pay your fee, you'll get in. But it is a black tie affair. Gotcha. Yeah. And again, it it really is to to enunciate um, his role. Um, uh, Larry was a lifetime member of the council. In other words, he paid his, his dues for his lifetime membership right. early mm. because he was that committed to the fraternity and he, he believed in the values and commitment to that fraternity. Gotcha, yeah. gotcha. So we're sneaking up on the finish line here in about five or so minutes. You know, Pastor Clark, say a little bit about what you want people to consider as we ponder the legacy of our brother and we ponder these events. What do you want us to, part to consider? Of what, part of what and who Larry was is he, he enjoyed being around people. He enjoyed having a good time. You know, there's parts of his life where, you know, you can draw attention to the fact. Yeah, I remember seeing him dancing at the yeah, yeah, time. He, time. Could, he, he, he could cut a step <laughs> here and there. <laughs> so we want people to enjoy themselves and, and, and all the events that we're having, have a good time, get to know some of the other people that he, he Larry, come to know so very well and, 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 and kind of kind of come together in, in, in fellowship or in just com camaraderie, we, we want to see that happen because that's that's at the source of who, source of who Larry was. Then we want there to be people to walk away with a sense of you've been talking about. Dr. Baker has been talking about a sense of history, who we are, self of, of uh, self of a uh, sense of ownness, and and, mm -hmm. and I think that's important that people uh, uh, learn. Uh, about who he was and trans let that translate into uh, a narrative that this is how we can also achieve. We can do the same or even greater. Mm -hmm. uh, greater works can we do. Mm -hmm. And and I, I think for me, I'd like to see that us walk away with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think about the diversity on city council even right now mm -hmm. as we speak. I mean, to include having a, a young Latina mm -hmm. president Right. Right. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, you've got Jasmine on there. You've got Dr. Titus mm -hmm. on there. You've got Mr. Troop mm -hmm. on there yeah. and with us, Ms. Witherspoon. And mm -hmm. so the diversity of great. city council right now is, yes, you know, noteworthy. We still got some work to do on county council. Yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> yeah. certainly Dre is not enough. We need right. to add another one or two. To yeah. it. Right. My understanding, he's got one more in here. He says he's done. Exactly. Yeah. So we need to we figure that out. Yeah. 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 We need to figure that out. But. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, once again, it's that having an appreciation for this is this is what came from that seed. Right, sure, exactly. Let us not take that for granted. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I want to. I want to make you know as you, as we talk yeah. about this the the if there was one thing I would want people to get from all these events, it really it, and it, the more I learn about Larry and his his spiritual context, the more I think about like spiritual identity, and so. Uh, just for a moment, like 30 seconds, if you can remember the story in, in John, Nicodemus. Nicodemus was a smart guy, but there's certain things he didn't understand. So he, he Nick at night, he went to Jesus at night, right? <laughs> Nick at night. Nick at night. <laughs> he wanted to find out. He was curious. Clever. Yes. And he asked Jesus some really important questions that changed his life. Now, fast forward, because you don't hear anymore. Like what? So he got that information. So and it kind of fits the narrative with, with um, Larry. While we didn't hear about Nicodemus, he was busy. He was still following Jesus. We don't we don't read it in the scripture. But when you get to the cross, who was there? Nicodemus. Mm -hmm. Nicodemus was right there, and he helped pull his body down. He financed, financed. yeah, that his whole person of the tomb and the whole bit. Mm -hmm. So was there an impact? Absolutely, and that's how I see Larry. 
is I went away, I got smart, I became not a Pharisee, but you know, <laughs> got an education. And then I kind of went to work and you didn't necessarily hear about me, but I was making an impact all over the place. And up until he died, it was right there. And now it's like, it's, it, it's incumbent upon us to make sure that Nicodemus was not forgotten. That's why I, I believe he's mentioned in that part of the Bible. And that is our motivation or my motivation to make sure his story is not lost. Yeah. yeah. And his, I, I want to add, and his very intelligent and industrious daughters yes. that he had. He had all daughters. <laughs> uh, uh, but they're, they're, they're just a joy, mm -hmm. and they're very, very dedicated to their professions and, and very intelligent, mm -hmm. like the dad. Yeah, and with that, I forgot to mention, there's going to be a, a Larry Meredith scholarship. Mm. Yeah, and the idea is to pour into folks. I'm not sure if it's exclusive to legal work or just promoting uh, children to go to school, go to college, but there, there will be a scholarship in his name. So, mm. Yeah, Excellent. Mm. Well, listen, thank you both so much for coming on and talking about not just these events, but educating us on the legacy of Mr. Meredith. And, you know, Dr. King always talked about those that were able to serve. You didn't have to you know, have a degree to serve, you don't have to make your verb and your adjectives, however, that, however the phrase goes, I don't want to mess up the, the <laughs> quote, but the bottom line is anybody can serve. If you want to be great, you can be great, learn how to serve. There you go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and anybody can play that role. Mm -hmm. and, and in community, I know we are so stuck on a macro level, communities are impacted most, I believe, mm -hmm. on the local level. Mm -hmm. I don't care if it's politically, I don't care if it's socially, you know, what's going on in your own backyard is oftentimes mm -hmm. way more important mm -hmm. than what you're seeing on a national level. And so soldiers like Mr. Mm -hmm. Meredith mm -hmm. are needed and necessary to every community's growth. Absolutely. Thank you both for coming Thank in today. Thank you so much. And just bringing us all the information. Any parting shots before we say goodbye to the audience? Anything we need to consider before we say goodbye to the audience? If we didn't say the, the August 5th event, it will be held at the JFK. I don't know that we... Uh, specifically said that. I'm glad you said that because I don't know if we caught that part yeah. either. All so right. It'll be 6 o'clock at the John F. Kennedy Center. You got it. You got it. All right. Like like my daughter would say, all hearts and minds clear. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. And I appreciate you. Thank you so much for, for, for giving up your time. Oh, of course. Giving space for this. Of course. That's what we do. And that's it for our show today. You can tune in next time for more discussion and analysis with local and national guests. I need you to remember that next 2.0 streams on Fridays on all major podcast platforms and on the fourth Sunday of the month at 4 p.m. on WQLN PBS NPR, which is 91.3 FM. And also there's a new feature. If you want to leave a message, comment, or suggestion for the show, you can call the next hotline, and that is 814-240-8816. We look forward to hearing from you. Marcus Atkinson, come and join us again for to hear about what's next for our communities and our democracy. Peace.